Let's talk goal writing in today's OT Minute, specifically the Coast Goal Writing Method. The Coast Goal Writing Method is one of a few common goal writing methods used in occupational therapy to come up with clear, measurable goals that help guide intervention, demonstrate progress throughout the OT process, and help ensure targeted intervention to help individuals improve their level of participation and performance in meaningful and important activities. Welcome back to the OT Minute. My name is Arno. I'm a third year OT student. Goals are an essential part of occupational therapy and there are a few common frameworks or methods for writing OT goals. A couple other common goal writing methods include the Roomba goals, uh, SMART goals, and a few other methods. But the one that we predominantly used in grad school and that I'm personally a little bit partial to is the COAST goal writing method. What I love about COAST is that it's simple, clear, and the acronym explicitly highlights occupation as a critical component of a good occupational therapy goal. Once you understand the basic overview of coast it makes it easy to create goals that ensure that all the necessary parts of a clear goal is there and that occupation is central to that goal it's also fair to say that each setting and place and person has their own style of goal writing so this method may need to be adjusted depending on where you work or where your field work is however the components will be very similar and can be rearranged or adapted as needed this will at least give you a framework to work from as i mentioned before coast is an acronym the c stands for client meaning who is this goal for? Keep in mind that client can refer to a specific or a single person or even to a whole population group. The O is for occupation. What will this person do or be able to do when they meet this goal? The A is for assistance level, meaning how much help will they need, whether it's physical assistance or some type of verbal cueing or tactile cueing in order to accomplish the goal. The S stands for specific condition, which refers to any extra criteria or supports that help define the conditions under which the goal will need to take place. This can include things like adaptive equipment, modifications of the task, modifications to the environment, time limits, things like that. Finally, T stands for time, which simply refers to when the goal is anticipated to be met. In other words, the timeline for meeting the goal whether it's one week or two months or so forth, depending on whether or not this is a short-term or a long-term goal. Let's look at a sample goal to see the format in action. Patient will don shorts with supervision within five minutes in two weeks. Here you'll see that patient is the client, will don shorts is the occupation, with supervision is the assistance level, within five minutes is the specific condition, meaning it needs to happen within that time frame, and then you'll see two weeks referring to the timeline in which we're anticipating that this goal will be met. I wanted to specifically highlight in this goal the difference between a specific condition, which is, you know, what conditions does this goal need to be met under, which is that it needs to be done within five minutes, likely targeting efficiency at this point, and then two weeks being when is this goal anticipated to be met. So T being kind of more timeline instead of a specific condition. Let's look at another example. Joey will tie his shoes independently using visual aids as needed within six months. Here you'll see that Joey is the client, tying his shoes is the occupation, independently is the assistance level that we're expecting, using visual aids as needed is the specific condition, and within six months is the timeline. What I like about understanding the simple COAST format is that now whatever goal I see, we can apply this framework quickly and easily to understand who's the client, what's the occupation that's being addressed, What's the assistance level that we're shooting for? And what are some specific conditions related to the goal? And finally, what time frame do we have to achieve this goal? It's simple, it's clear, and hopefully it's helpful to you. For good measure, let's do two more examples. For this goal, the client will independently transfer to a toilet with a raised toilet seat using a rolling walker within six sessions. For this goal, what I wanted to highlight is the fact that Coast doesn't always have to be in that order, C-O-A-S-T. You can change the parts around a little bit, but you'll see that all the necessary parts are here. The client is identified, the occupation is identified, meaning they will transfer to a toilet, and then the assistance level is highlighted, which is that they will do this independently, and that the specific conditions is they're using a rolling walker. And I guess you could also make the argument that a raised toilet seat would be a specific condition, and then within six sessions being the timeline that we're trying to accomplish this goal by. Next, let's look at Layla's goal here. Layla will brush teeth with moderate verbal cues while seated in wheelchair in three weeks. 
Layla is the client, brushing the teeth is the occupation, moderate verbal cues is the assistance level, while seated in a wheelchair is the specific condition, and within three weeks being the timeline that we're trying to accomplish this goal. I'd love to hear from you, what goal writing method do you like to use, or are there any goal writing tips that you think are helpful when talking about occupational therapy goals, comment down below and let's share the knowledge. I hope these simple examples have made goal writing using the COAST goal writing method clear, easy, and straightforward. I do wanna leave you with just one little thought. Just because we can write a measurable goal that's clear and has all the right components of a goal, there is more to goal writing because ultimately it needs to reflect the client's specific needs and ideally what is meaningful to them. Therefore, observational skills, activity analysis, uh, skills, clinical reasoning, all of those things are really important to help ensure that we're writing goals that target the specific needs of a person to help them increase or regain meaningful occupational performance and participation. If you wanna brush up on the types of clinical reasoning in OT, I do have a video on that and I'll link it in the card above. Thanks again for joining me on the OT Minute. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share this content if you found it to be helpful and I'll see you in the next video.